Hello everyone, we are the, the Nobodies. Nobodies. What are we doing here today? Today we are going to be listening, reacting, and interviewing a band called Mara. A week right after a one year anniversary video, we uh we have another thing which is actually pretty insane. Yeah, we decided that for the next year, we're going to um, go around the world. We're going to hit bands around the world, because we're from America, so we want to concentrate on metal around the world, get people's names out there, and uh, I was on Instagram, and Mara just happened to uh, her come up in my feed, the band, and... Um, yeah, I watched it. I watched the 30 second clip of the uh, music uh, video and I was, I loved it. So I figured, you know what, let's do a reaction. I got in touch with them and uh, here we are. So we are going to be listening to Mara's Label Me Insane. Let's do this. I'm son. And I'm father. Stop it right there. Okay, what I noticed already, she escaped from somewhere. Yeah, definitely. She yeah. looks like she's in a uh, hospital, no, hospital gown. attire. Yeah, so she escaped from somewhere, and obviously she got picked up by the police. All right, that's what I got out of it so far. All right. Yeah, please. Our, oh my goodness, what wow. a start. <laughs> Isn't that freaking song sick? Holy crap. Oh man, dude. There's so much energy going on in that freaking tune right there. You got the drummer, who we will be interviewing, killing it. We've got the freaking guitarist, who we will be interviewing, killing it. And we've got the singer slash growler, yeah. killing it, who we will be interviewing. Yes, I got a lot of questions for all of them. And, uh, you know, I just can't believe the amount of noise that's coming out of that drum set. I'm a drummer. I love the drums. And he's playing on it, but looks like a three-piece or a four-piece. And he's playing the drums like he's coming out of an 11-piece. Yeah. Like, there's so much sound coming out of his drum set. And it's such a small kit. And it's it's just amazing how he's able to do that. Um, yeah, bassist is on yeah, fire. Yeah, the bassist too, I wanted to bring I, up. I love his style, he, he's, he's headbanging, because usually a bassist is all, they're always bored. <laughs> like, I'm the bassist, you know, like, yeah, okay, My I play bass. My very quiet compared yeah, to oh, everyone Yeah, else. he's always the one that doesn't headbang nothing, like, this whole band is just energized. Love it, love it. Awesome.
Okay. Okay, first off, I love that chorus. Oh, the chorus and the hook are amazing. That chorus is beautiful right yeah, there. The, the, she, she has a great voice. Yeah, seriously. You know, and the way she could switch it from a growl to singing is, like, is talent. I so I definitely <laughs> want to find out if she went to school for that or if she just woke up one day pissed off at the <laughs> world. And, um... Well, maybe allergic to some plant in her throat. Oh, so weird. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she, she was allergic, allergic to something. She, ah, you know, she, oh, wow, I, I might have something here. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, but we will find out how she, uh, decided to, um, you know, uh, growl. Oh, wow, we got people commenting already. RB, he was very proud yes, of he was, Yes, for a one-year anniversary. Yeah. Um, how you doing today? Yeah, What's what up? is up? Anyway, let's keep playing the song. Yeah, let's keep playing. Yes. Okay. That was fantastic. I'm going to have to ask what was going on during that video. Cause well, I'm... I think the message that I got out of it is uh, psychiatrists and psychologists are the people that are actually crazy for the pure fact that they need to hold a job. You know, because if they tell you you're okay, then you don't need them no more. Yeah. And they got bills to pay. So, you know, she obviously in the video was... Um, he was, you know, venting. She was letting, you know, telling the doctor everything. And he's like, yeah, whatever, whatever. I, you know, I, I don't really care what you have to say. I'm just here to make a paycheck. And uh, at the end, you know, I guess I guess psychiatrists, they go crazy because they hear hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people's stories every day. And that could make them crazy too. You know what I mean? So there was definitely a lot going on in that song, but that's what I got out of it. I believe that, uh, yeah, it was all about, um, you know, uh, the fact that, that those doctors really don't give a crap. Yeah. So uh, I, I'm seeing one of the comments here. Uh, ginger better? No. Y you shouldn't watch our ginger reaction. Yeah, don't, don't watch our ginger reaction. <laughs> we we blew ginger up and... Uh, yeah, we, got like, we got like 5,000 views on our ginger and I'd say we probably got about 4,000 dislikes it's the <laughs> and old... about one like. <laughs> <laughs> we, we blew him up. We did not <laughs> like him. Sorry, sorry, but uh, the, in my mind, this Ben Mara is way better. Oh, and, so uh, much. So much better. So anyway, uh, let's get to them. All right. Let's uh, give them a call. Yep, quick setup. Sorry, one second. Got to turn do stuff. Uh, let me see. All right, cool. And then turn that on. All right, calling you. Hello. What is up? Hey, what's going on? Hey. Oh. Wait. All yes. right, cool. Awesome. Do we see each other? Do we hear each other well? Uh, I, I think so. I hear you guys fine. Um, so we just got done watching your video. Yeah. Oh. Ab ab <laughs> absolutely amazing. Seriously. You are a rock star on guitar, <laughs> you are a rock star on drums, and you are a rock star at vocals. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for that. You guys uh, I, I have to call you back, unfortunately, because I have 
my picture just stopped. I don't really see your uh, face. Can I just call you back? If you want to see our face, there should be a little camera thing on the bottom. I mean, it was really great to see your reaction with you. It was so awesome. Uh, I, I want to see you. All right, uh, I'll call you back. Yeah, fine. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, let's talk to the... Uh, I don't think uh, the drum is going to hang up, right? No, no, I'm here. Yes, I, I got it fixed. I didn't have to call you back. Awesome. Awesome. All right. Well, uh, for the drummer, first of all, how do you get so much sound out of that little kit? How many years have you been playing? You should see the cymbals. But the cymbals, Robert, it will be even more <laughs> surprising. I played for nine years right now. Okay. But uh, I I am very emotional when it's get when it gets to playing the drums and I involve emotion in my playing. Yeah, seriously, sounds like it. You were going in freaking insane during that video. Yeah, you could tell when you were feeling the music for sure. Yeah, and I am playing with my whole body. Let's say that. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, uh, good. So wait, like uh. Double bass, right? Yeah, double you have a you, you you have a, a single bass drum, but you play on a double bass pedal, right? Yeah, of course, yeah. Okay, cool. excellent. Guitarist. Hi. What's your name, buddy? Dennis. Dennis, how you doing, Dennis? We got uh, Ray and Jonathan here. Yeah. Okay. Um. I'm a, hope you're so also. Oh, <laughs> thank you. Yeah, uh, your solo was absolutely amazing in that song. Uh, how long have you been playing the guitar for? I'm playing uh, metal since uh, 1991. Wow. You've been in many bands? Yeah, actually, it's. Uh, I can say this is the band number three in my life, which I can tell you the serious band, and uh, some smaller project also was in my life. But uh, actually, Demara is uh, most important for the moment. All right. Oh, so. Beautiful. Got a question for uh, Miss. Your name? Uh, vocalist. Yes, my name is exactly the same as the band name. I know it's not not that nothing original, but no, <laughs> no, a, it is a band. Mod is a is great Mod. band name. Are you the one that uh, created the band, being it's your name, or did did you all? How'd you all meet? Well, actually, uh, Dennis is our uh, ship's captain. And uh, he actually put this uh, whole band together, and he came up with this idea to actually use use my name because we couldn't uh, couldn't find a band name. What would for all of us? We were arguing a lot. Like one had this one idea, another had this another idea. We couldn't just you know vote for one name. So Dennis just said, "Oh, okay, you know this this project is is um, all about you. And why is it so? I will tell you. Uh, so let's just use your name." And how we met uh, is that um, uh, I was actually, when I started doing uh, extreme vocals, uh, that was four, year, four years ago when I started to do them, and uh, um, I just, I didn't have a band, I couldn't find a band for a very long time, and I did just guest vocals for some other bands. And I did this guest vocal appearance for a famous Latvian uh, metal band, which is called Preternatural. And um, uh, I posted the video uh, of the performance online, and then he saw that video. And uh, he saw, and what was the thing what you said about it? You have to tell it in your words. Well, me? Yep. Uh, Yes, the Mara told truth. That I just saw here uh, Mara on stage with the Breath of Natural, and the some ideas come to my head like, uh, wow, this is the uh, actually really interesting, and uh, I have a lot of materials which is like uh, staying and waiting for something special, and I immediately realized that we can create something interesting because. Uh, in my opinion, she looks perfect, she sings perfect, and uh, looks like she's named for a band also perfect. So, hmm. so, so much perfect for one woman, it's just, we need to do something. Yeah. Uh, she, she, she's not going to be able to, yeah, she's not going to be able to fit out of the door. She's not going to be able to fit out of the door, her head's so big now. <laughs> it's okay, she deserves it. 
What um <laughs> what are your influences? What what helped you create your your style? You ask Mara or me? Everybody. Yeah. Uh, it's different. I mean, uh, our style is quite versatile because we bring uh, each other's, uh, like each, um, we bring each our own uh, influences into music. I'm mostly in uh, death metal. I really like death metal, so that's what, what where the low girls come from. And so I'm always asking because uh, our main songwriter is Dennis. I'm always like, bring some more brutal stuff, you know. <laughs> And, um, yeah, so, uh, but obviously, like, vocal-wise, my influences are so many, like, far too many, I can't name them all, but they're from various genres, that's why, uh, that's why I feel like my vocals are more versatile, because I have these different influences, not just metal, not just uh, rock or whatever, just, just, like, very broad spectrum of influences. Excellent. Next. The personal in me, it's like I'm the old guy and uh, I'm into by rare trash, like forbidden violence and so. Nice. But and the next step was Pantera and Sepultura, so I tried to mix the old old stuff like by rare trash with the Pantera style and something personal. But I'm actually really very he's very versatile versatile yes versatile. so i can i can also i'm into death metal too so i can mix everything oh, okay. i just for I, I just like the great stuff no any third and fourth leak i need everything sounds perfect yeah well in the song that we reacted to um i noticed there were definitely just in the one song so many different styles in that one song like you know, you had the death metal in the beginning with her growl, and then you go into that nice, uh, you know, thrash uh, hook. So, yeah, you could definitely see the different styles, and it, it makes it uh, original, I would say. Yeah. Right now in my car, CD start, uh, comes from ACDC till Cannibal Corp, so this is the best answer for, for the music I like. Oh, beautiful. Yeah. So, uh, speaking of the song we're reacting to, what the hell inspired that song? Like, where does that come from? <laughs> uh, yeah, I can I can speak about the lyrics. So, uh, lyrically wise, it's actually it covers uh, many subjects in, in one. So, the first subject, uh, basically the chorus, is about um, idea that people a lot of times they suppress their negativity. You know, the bad emotions like anger, frustration, sadness, because it's uh, not. Uh, comfortable for society if you know what I mean that uh, you know uh, when you for example when you go out and you are being sad you know some people might get offended by that they're like what you said just smile and you know no one wants to see you sad no one wants to see you depressed no one wants to see you anger so basically in this society we should we should act like some psychopaths so it's like always smiling you know and always super positive so what I'm saying in this course is that, you know, you should also accept your negativity. Because if you, for example, look at the Inyan, yes, sometimes people forget about that Inyan is half white, half black. So it doesn't mean that you're always white. You should be always white. Or on the other hand, you shouldn't be always black. So you should find that, that balance between. And for a lot of people, I think the problem is suppressing that negativity. And there, uh, by suppressing the negativity, comes in the psychiatric theme uh, that, uh, you know, the psychi psychiatry is about that, you know, just fighting with all these bad emotions. So you take pills that, you know, cut out these bad emotions, but overall they would cut out all emotions. Because mm -hmm. there are no pills who will have their own mind, like, oh, we're going to cut out just the negative ones. They just cut out all of them. So you might see a lot of people who take these drugs, they kind of bit like zombies walking yeah, like that. Yeah, they, yeah. Like, they numb down, they have no, like, emotion at all. So that's the psychiatric aspect of that. And, uh, and yeah, basically... Uh, Right now in, uh, in psychiatry, there are so many diagnoses. So basically every person that comes in into psychiatrist's office would walk out with a recipe for some pills. You know, there's something wrong with them, you know. So, and um, 
And uh, yeah, that's that's the aspect about uh, also the pharmacy industry coming in into this uh, theme uh, because yeah, a lot of business, themes. It's it's a business, and a lot yeah. of people are overdrugged. So ah. that's, I mean, that's a whole. Uh, in this video, that's why you see, you know, all these happy pills. There's boxes with smiley faces, you know, and he's like, he's doing the injection, and everything. So, so basically, that's the cure. That's the magic cure for all of your problems, you know. And uh, well, obviously, I'm not saying, you know, the psychiatry is bad. That uh, pharmaceutical business is bad. I mean, I'm just speaking about some, you know, dark side of it all. So I'm just highlighting it. Uh, cause, uh, okay. I mean, not a lot of people actually speak about it. We actually got a, uh, um, a fan of yours. It says greetings from Latvia. And I guess that's where you guys are from. Yes. Um, he asks what songs of yours are close to you? What songs? Hmm. Do you guys have any answer for that? <laughs> Are they all close to you? <laughs> Do you have one that really strikes you, like your favorite? Songs or, or in general? No, it says it says uh, your songs. Yeah. Ah, songs. Um, Dennis, what's your favorite? I don't know. I like all my songs. I like my children. You don't have a favorite child. I do. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> um, I'm also his, I'm also his least favorite technically. <laughs> no. Generally, not generally, but at the moment, I mean that the last video. This is the song I actually try to listen every day twice. So at the moment, I mean for me, it's song number one. But generally, after we release the moment we release full album, something can change. Okay. Uh, so like, uh, I would go for Beauty of Humanity because that song is so untypically uh, metal because it and, and it's very working on the contrast. What I really like about metal in general when I when I listen to other bands. So yeah, that, that song is not recorded, uh, but I think there's some live videos in, in YouTube for that song. But that's that's my favorite. It go, goes. It's beautiful and brutal and ugly at the same time. So I love these contrasts. I love. Yeah, it, this is the song where the chorus is perfect, but not so catchy, or we can say catchy. <laughs> All the time, Dennis. <laughs> Um, okay, I got another question for you now. Uh, is it hard to be a female growler? How do you how do you do you practice? Do you go to school? Do you, or do you just wake up one day and say, you know what, I feel like growling? How how did how did it all happen? Yeah, we had our theory. <laughs> I just compare because I have no bloody idea how it is to be a male female male yeah, growler. Yeah, I got you. <laughs> I have no idea. All I can say you, I'm a vocal coach and uh, I also do teach extreme vocals and I've noticed that for some guys it's super easy. But for some guys it's much more difficult, you know, it's much more, more difficult than it was for me to learn. So uh, if you speak about the growl then uh, it's actually, it came super easy for me. It came straight away when I tried it. Uh, and uh, how, how I did this, I didn't have any recorder at home, so I would call on my landline to uh, to the, this um, voice box, and I left the messages with me growling, and then I called, I listened to my voice box, and then I listened how it sounded, you know. After Afterwards, my mother gets a huge bill for the phone, so I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> But, uh, but the thing was, when I just tried that sound, it just came out. It just came out. I hadn't, like, hadn't struggled for it, you know? So that's that's one of the easiest techniques uh, that actually came out from uh, from my voice, naturally. Hmm. Uh, we got, okay, great. Uh, we got another. Yeah, you, got, you guys are getting questions. That's good. <laughs> What's your favorite Kiss movies? <laughs> uh, they're blowing kisses at your fans. <laughs> My favorite movie, um, I actually thought about this recently, but then I, I, I don't know if I figured it out. 
Uh, recently, I watched, I like this movie, it's, it's called 1900, about uh, um, pianist, pianist, yes, the word, pianist, no. uh, yeah. yeah, I would say that, that I, I really like that one. What about you guys? Oof. My favorite movie is the trilogy Godfather, especially part number two. Ah, The Godfall, a great movie. And Mr. Drummer? Uh, I don't have one favorite movie, but uh, I like very much uh, horror and comedy genres. Okay. And maybe, com hmm. and maybe combined. Somehow. You like you, you like Adam Sandler? <laughs> of course. <laughs> <laughs> He's funny. All right, so uh, all what about you guys, father and son? Oh man, I don't watch What's movies. Yours? It's a waste you know of time. What? It's a waste of time. I could be doing so much more in two hours. Oh. I know, especially when you're in the cinema. I don't like cinemas because you have to stand, sit still, you know, for one and a half hour. At least at home you can just, you know, go around and make some tea or something, but then I, you just, like, sit and watch. Yeah, you're 100% right. And you know what? I, I uh, basically, um, in my lifetime, probably only watched about 10 movies. People ask me, do you see this? Do you see that? you see this? Nope. Nope, nope. Well, what do you do? Uh, let me see. I play the drums. I learn second languages. I, I yeah. there's so much wow. other things you could do within that two hours. You know what I mean? Looks like he won't oh. be able to get through the door either. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, uh, so your your album. Do you have an album? Is it and where can you get it? Uh, we don't have an album yet. It's coming out on November twenty second. Okay. It's gonna be our debut EP. It's called therapy for an empath so make sure to follow us and then you will see when it's out and then we're gonna follow this with a mini tour in baltic states and poland hmm, nice what kind of um what's a good question let me see How, what kind of instruments do you use what uh, as far as your amplifier uh then uh what um do you use a marshall crate what do you use I use uh, PV5150. Okay. Molded in the States, was by through the, bought it through the eBay maybe seven years ago. It sounds really aggressive and huge. And the uh, the cabinet I use, it's named Basson. It's also from the States, but this company is uh, closed. And uh, the guitar I use, uh, it's named Caparison. This is the guy who was owner in the Jackson Guitars, the Japanese company, really huge guitar. Nice. And your drum set? Drum set, let's say, uh, I actually use Yamaha Stage Custom. Uh, prefer to use uh, Pace Cymbals uh, and um, Big Fur Sticks. <laughs> so, like, do you... Beyond the instruments you already play in, like, your videos and stuff, do you guys... Pl have you guys learned any other instruments? Yeah, I play piano, and uh, I do some vocals myself, too. And uh, I'm percussionist. And I we'll, can play percussions too. Will we hear that on the new album? A any of your other skills? We'll see. Okay. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> uh, I also play. I play drums, bass, guitar. Uh, I also singer and uh, play piano for eight years. So actually, we can use a lot of instruments now. Uh, yeah. Nice. So it lo looks like uh, some some trouble with the bar. Ah, we can hear her. What happened? She speaks some. Oops. Oh, something's up. She hung up. Oh, ah, here she is. Oh, damn, I, I, lost, uh, I lost the sound, sorry. Oh, no, it's <laughs> I didn't fine. Hear, I didn't hear what you were talking about for the last, I don't know, half minute. We have, um, we, we, we have another what? question. Um, what is your favorite foods uh, of, of your uh, nation, Latvia? Like, what's that? <laughs> what? Wait, uh, it's. I think in English it's um, grape 
No, brown peas. I don't know, they're called brown, but for us it's, it's gray, so hmm. we have this strange, uh, strange peas that are in the color of brown. Really? Do they taste good? <laughs> I've never <laughs> had a brown pea before. Yes, and we usually eat it uh, on the Christmas, so oh, okay. soon we'll be time. Sure. <laughs> but, uh, what's your favorite traditional, oh. Albert? Just straight up, I love spaghetti. <laughs> yeah. yeah, my my last meal is going to be uh, chicken cutlet with egg noodles. Is that traditionally American? Yes. They take chicken breast, they slice it, and then they fry it, deep fry it. And then uh, egg noodles is a squirt, like a, I don't know, a, just, just a noodle. But you cover it with chicken gravy and, uh, oh my God. Uh, I like the potato pancakes. I think that's Latvian too. Okay. Potato pancakes. Hmm. Yeah, you would love some potato pancakes too, right? <laughs> so, uh, we weren't able to hear your, like, answer from before, uh, so we know he plays, like, piano and percussion. How about, uh, you guys? Anything else? Like, in terms of, um, what other instruments you play? Oh, what do I play? Um, actually, I play a tiny bit of lot of stuff. I play a tiny bit of guitar, I play a tiny bit of uh, keys, I uh, play a tiny bit of bass, what my husband has taught me, um, but but nothing uh, nothing like really seriously. I'm just actually, uh, right now I'm learning uh, more piano, but uh, but yeah, just, just some basic stuff basically. Hmm. There's so much, there's so much to do with the voice. It's unbelievable. Like uh, voice is the instrument. There's so much what to do. I still plan to do Arabic singing. I want to learn Arabic singing. I want to learn the throat singing and overtone singing and uh, no yodeling. I don't like yodeling, but that's <laughs> probably the, that's probably the only technique I don't want to learn. But but still, I mean, there's plenty to do. But voice is the most difficult instrument there is. I am. Yeah, teach, teach voice, teaching voice teaching is like pfft, impossible because you know for the instruments you know you can show how to put your fingers but then you know when you te teach someone voice you know it's just like you have to work with the giving the guidance and they have to make you know these tiny small adjustments in their you know tiny larynxes is, is just unbelievable. That's that's like oh that's a magical instrument. Okay, yeah. there's, so, uh, there's got... so much you can do in singing. Yeah. Okay, someone says here that, uh, he says, sorry, I'm a nerd, but are you planning on watching the new Fantastic Beasts? Is that, does that mean anything to you? No. No? Okay, next. Alright, so, um... So, so somebody <laughs> said, yes, you need to get into metal yodeling. That will be a new market. <laughs> no, no, I would do some, I would do some other stuff, no, no, yodeling. <laughs> Gosh! Like, oh my God! No! <laughs> I wonder how it would sound. <laughs> <laughs> She's already wondering. It's coming out the next album, right? <laughs> <laughs> I did it! I never did it. <laughs> That's funny. All right. Well, um, that this has been awesome. We always end with uh, one final question that uh, that you know we try. We ask all the bands this: if you had Anything to tell your fans about the music business, about how to get started, or anything? What would you tell them? You mean fans or musicians? Any, you mean yeah, musicians. fans, musicians, anyone trying to get into the music business, you know, what should they strive for? What should they look out for? You know, what, what do you have to tell them? Oh, well, it depends on your goals. If you're striving for the music industry, then you have to sell yourself. That's, That's it. Thing. You are a product, then you have to sell you sell yourself, and uh, I mean uh, that's a music business. The word itself tells that you know that it's it's about selling. You know, the more sellable you are as a product, I hate the word, but musicians are labeled as a product by the music industry, if you, as, as you know it. So basically, yeah, the more sellable you are, then better. It's I mean it's that easy. And nowadays, unfortunately, I think it's. The, the matter is not so much about the content, it's about just product, the packaging and everything else, so it's, you know, it looks good, so it's, 
it's the more chances of people are gonna buy it so I know it sounds tough, you know, but if you want to be a musician, then you probably have to set some other goals, you know, just self-realization and then just, and then if people like it, that's fine. But, you know, it's just, it's just about that. Hmm. Yeah, you could sound good, but you could look like you never took a shower and no one's going to buy your stuff. <laughs> you you got to have a mix of, you're, you're 100% right. You got to have the look, you got to have the sound, it all, it's all got to be one package yeah. yeah so people look at you and like yes i want to go to their show i want to buy you know their merch i want to do this all this stuff so i don't know yeah so basically you have to you basically have to think if you if you are going into the business you have to think more as a business person and that's it yeah well that's why we got shirts <laughs> yeah <laughs> cool shirts by the way <laughs> with uh, right. I feel like uh, with metal fans, they're probably a lot more open to how the people they listen to look compared to, like, other pop, pop, rap, yeah. stuff like that. Well, I don't know. I see, you know, the new metal bands coming out, they're all so pretty. They like, look good and everything, so <laughs> no. I don't know. I, I think, you know, the commercial commerciality is is spreading it to all the spheres, to all the genres. Uh, although I wouldn't like to say that, but I, I, I notice it. That actually, you know, people who are, you know, prettier, more good looking, blah, 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 that stuff, you know, they get more recognition. Well, I think mean, it's a tough truth, but it is truth. Okay, you? Say yeah. something more positive, because otherwise I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> say all this depressive stuff. I think you must find yourself at the first to know why you are doing this, why you are playing what you are playing, why you are doing what you are doing. Re the reason why hmm. and what you like in that and what, how that makes you feel. It's for me, actually. It works for me. Do you? Okay, next. You know, I, I think the Mara told you completely truth, and uh, my word is a uh, little bit uh, the same. But I think if you are into music business, listen to what told Mara. The second way, you can play music, but without business. In that territory, you can do whatever you want. Understand what I mean? Yeah, hundred percent. Do you guys um have any gigs coming up? You got a uh, gig in. You want to tell your fans, you know, future plans for uh, tours, gigs, shows? Yeah, I already mentioned that after we're going to release uh, our EP, we have a mini tour in the Baltic States and Poland. That's going to start on uh, November 29th. We start from Riga. Um, four shows there, Latvia, Lithuania, Estonia and Poland. Nice. That's great. Awesome. That's great. I'm glad to see you guys are, you know, taking this serious. Thank you for your time. It was, uh, we, we had a blast. All right. So we do a thing where you're going to have to say your names in a second. <laughs> yeah, we're going to do our outro. So you're going to be part of it. But, you know, so just give us one second. All right, guys. So remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Tell us down in the comment section below who you'd like to see us interview next and what songs we should listen to because we take your requests. I'm son. And I'm father. And you are? <laughs> Yo, that's so cool. <laughs> yeah. Great job, guys. Rock on. Rock on.